election, obviously, as journalists, it's our Super Bowl. Honored to bring in our experts tonight because anxious to get insight from them. Leslie Herod from the Colorado House of Representatives and George Brockler, the District Attorney and 18th Judicial. Uh, let, let's open with uh, switching hats here, gang. Um, you guys are politicians, but I'm going to ask you to be journalists. Leslie, let's begin with you. What is the big headline so far tonight? I think the big headline right now is the margin that the Democrats have won Colorado. I mean, seeing the margin of uh, by the Biden-Harris ticket and John Hickenlooper um, and Cory Gardner, I think that margin is the, is the headline. Democrats win big across the state. And George, we'll turn it to you. You put your journalist cap on right now. What is the big headline so far at this point for Republicans? Uh, I think the ballot measures is probably the place that the Republicans have to look to for uh, some positive news. I don't think it was a surprise at all to anyone who'd been following these races that Corey was going to end up losing to John or that uh, the president was going to end up losing to Biden for this state. Uh, but I do think the ballot measures are particularly intriguing. And if you want to look at the closest race in the state of Colorado right now anywhere, it's the race to replace me as district attorney. Yeah. And, and I was going to go there um, because I want to get insight from both Leslie on the House, but you on the DA. What are those numbers showing right now, George? Well, for the DA's race in the 18th, uh, with about a half a million plus votes cast, there's only a 2,800 vote margin. I think that bodes well for John Kellner, the Republican and Lieutenant Colonel from the Marines, because I think all the late breaking votes that we're going to start to see counted over the next several hours, maybe into tomorrow, are probably mostly going to favor him. I think he's going to pull this off by a narrow margin. In other district attorneys' races, I think you're going to see the Democrat Alexis King win out in Jefferson County. I think you'll see Brian Mason take over for Dave Young up in the 17th. Um, I think you might even see the Democrat win up in Larimer County for the first time in a super long time. Uh, that's what I think I see in the DA's races as big changes. George, thank you for that. Yeah, Leslie, that your, I, I, your venue, your bailiwick is clearly the Capitol. What, what are you seeing at the yeah. Capitol right now? I'm seeing a district attorney council uh, that is a lot more progressive than it used to be. We are seeing Democratic attorney generals win across the state of Colorado. Why? Because Coloradans want reform. They want to make sure that their DA is at the table to create a criminal justice system that is just and fair for all of us. That is what these Democratic candidates ran on, and they're winning. Now, the pattern race is interesting. I mean, we haven't seen a Republican in that seat for, I don't know, you tell me how long, or a Democrat in that seat for, I don't know how long, George, you tell me. Um, but uh, while I'll miss you at the Capitol, George, I look forward to hearing from Democrats who support criminal justice reform and working on these issues together. Well, as you know, I've been- Leslie, let me, let me keep it with you for a reform. moment. What are you seeing? Uh, and and let, me, let me keep it going here. Leslie, your, your venue is the Capitol. What has surprised you so far from the early returns on, on both the Senate and the House side? You know, um, what I think is really interesting in the House is we've actually picked up some seats in places that uh, probably two years ago we wouldn't have expected to. Um, we're seeing David Ortiz joining us in the state capitol, and he will be uh, the first uh, person who actually has a wheelchair. And I got to tell you, the whole capital has to change, and it should. We're excited about that. We are going to be electing also the first Muslim woman in the history of Colorado. So we are going to see some real changes in the state house, and we're picking up in the state senate. Listen, this is a good night for Democrats, and it starts in Colorado. George, your perspective on what's happening at the state capitol. Uh, many insiders talked to me and said if Republicans could just lose one seat on the Senate side, that would be a victory. What's your take right now? Yeah, I think the Rankin seat uh, out there in the West seems like it's, uh, it's going to be a close call. Rankin's a little upside down right there, but it looks like Kevin Priola is going to win in a district he should not be winning in. There was a lot of talk on the House side of how soft uh, Douglas County was in terms of R's and D's and that Kevin uh, Van Winkle in 43 might be in jeopardy. He is clearly going to win that by five points. Same thing with the most expensive county commissioner races, maybe in Colorado. 
uh, this, this time around. Both Republicans are going to win handily there. So while I do think overall it's probably a good night for Democrats, and that was to be predictable, I don't think it was quite the blue wave that was anticipated in parts of the state where you have Republican strongholds. There's a lot there for Republicans to look forward to in the future. Let's turn our attention now back to that state, that U.S. Senate race and, and all the money that was put in there. You heard the speeches, the concession speech from Senator Gardner, the acceptance speech from former governor, now Senate-elect Hickenlooper. I want to understand what you both heard. And Leslie, I'm going to start with you. Because with Cory Gardner, I heard a candidate who lost, but I think I also heard a candidate who may have future political aspirations, either the Senate seat of, of Michael Bennett in 2022 or possibly the governor's seat. Leslie, what did you hear from those speeches and what did you hear specifically from the Republican Cory Gardner? Yeah, you know, I, I thought Cory Gardner gave a very gracious concession speech. Um, it came a lot earlier than I think anyone anticipated. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of him for standing up for Colorado and talking about working together on issues to move uh, Colorado forward. You know, I got to tell you, I heard the same thing. I heard someone who might want to run for other seats. And I think that would be a gift to the Democrats because we know um, who we're running against, um, quite frankly. And we know some of his weak spots. And what, what Cory Gardner didn't do was he didn't differentiate himself from Trump. He didn't talk about moving Colorado forward, or that at least did not resonate with the voters, because he supported Trump so much. And what Coloradans want to see is someone like John Hickenlooper, who doesn't necessarily always side with a party, but really does what's right for Colorado and our values. And that's why he was elected. So, you know, I don't disagree with you that we might see a Cory Gardner running for another seat in the future. Um, but right now, those two seats are held by Democrats, and they're strong Democrats. Mr. Brockler, we're almost out of time. Give me 15 seconds, your take of the two speeches. Oh, I thought Cory Gardner's been a class act from start to stop his entire time in elected office. I think that the bar he has set for Senator-elect Hickenlooper is insurmountable for him. He's passed more legislation than the entire congressional delegation combined. In six years, we'll get a chance to look back and see what Hickenlooper's done with that. I do not anticipate he will be as effective as Cory was. George Brockler on the Republican side, Leslie Herod on the Democrat side. Thank you for your insight. We'll have much more from you throughout the night. Obviously a very fascinating political night. And Shannon, I'll send it back to you.